All right, today we're gonna to cut some of the tomatoes up out of my garden and see what they look like inside. I have, I believe, seven different tomato types here. I actually have eight in my garden. The Daddy Sunset, which is orange tomato, none have turned orange yet. It's not doing the best. So we're just gonna go over the ones that I got because I'm actually gonna use these tomorrow to make some uh, tomato pasta sauce. So let's cut some open. This is the great white tomato. Um, this is a much bigger one. You can see size wise. That one's about a pound and a half. So we're going to cut open a smaller one, the great white tomato, which obviously is a white tomato. When it's ripe, it gets like a yellowish golden color on the outside, but the inside is going to be probably a lot more white. Uh, yeah, there you go. So nice white color in the center there's the yellow around the skin um, very clean tasting tomato kind of like a, a sweet taste low acid so yep great white tomato put this in this bowl over here that one probably weighs probably less than a pound um, like I said this one over here I weighed this the other day this one about a pound and a half and they can get on average about one pound they can even get as large as three pounds um, it just depends. So let's do the next one. This is a small tomato. It's the green zebra tomato. It's a pretty good tasting tomato. It's a green. It's striped. When it's ripe, it gets this gold on the top and gold throughout it. Um, it's a pretty good tasting tomato. The only problem with it is I've been growing it for years. It always gets disease really bad. It, it's labeled as an indeterminate tomato, but it always grows like a determinate tomato, meaning it it kind of doesn't get very tall. It pretty much sets all of its fruit at one time. You get it over a very short period over a couple weeks and the plant dies. Mine actually already died. I'm gonna plant something else there. Um, just waiting for the rest of the tomatoes to ripen on it. But it's a small tomato typically, anywhere from like two to four ounces. And actually have a little scale here. Let's see what it's in. It's all in ounces, okay. Yeah, that one's actually perfectly average. It's 2.17 ounces. Um, which is um, right on the average of what it should be. So let's open this one. Open it and cut it open. It's not a package, it's a tomato. And you can kind of see what it looks like in there. It's green, it's got that golden skin. It's a really good tasting tomato. It's just very disease prone in my area for some reason. But it does set a decent amount of fruit, at least for the amount of space that it takes up. But you pretty much get them all at one time, at least where I live. Um, let's do the Black Beauty. This is one I'm always going to continue to grow. I've been growing this for many years. Um, the Black Beauty tomato actually does really well in this area. You know it's an air limb. It doesn't seem to get the disease nearly as much as the other plants get. It holds on better. It just seems to be more resistant to problems. The only issue with it, it's not a big deal to me, but let's say you were someone who was selling tomatoes to like market. The Black Beauty tomato is really bad about cracking if you let it go too far, so it's hard to get that perfect ripeness between picking it too early or you going too far and it cracks. Or it cracks, it loves to crack right on the bottom right there. This one's not cracked, but they have a really bad habit of splitting down the bottom. But it's a really good tasting tomato. Um, plant does really well, produces a lot, goes throughout the season. Um, and it's just something different. Like if you cut it open, that color kind of goes throughout the tomato. Um, nice dark color. Um, very flavorful. You know, it is an heirloom. But it's a really good tomato. Um, I definitely recommend trying the Black Beauty out became very popular. I save my seeds every year for it and the seeds have definitely gone up in price. I've seen it as high as five, six dollars for a pack of seeds when I first got it. It was like three dollars. Uh, let's do another one. The Paul Robinson tomato, which is also kind of a dark tomato. Not nearly as dark as the Black Beauty. Instead of being the, kind of like a dark purple, it's almost like a smoky green color. Um, a lot of people like the Paul Robinson. It almost has a cult-like following. Um, I've grown it for two years. I'm not going to grow it again. It does not do well in my region at all. It hates, seems to hate the heat and humidity. 
and it just says I'm getting out of here and well it did but I did get some decent tomatoes off of it it just isn't gonna last but I'm gonna put another tomato plant in its place so no big deal I have a long season so I can do that where I live um, well yeah more dense I would say than the black beauty so that's the black beauty that's the Paul Robinson um, a little more dense in the center a little less maybe seed pockets um, it's a nice thick piece there really holds together very well be uh, really good on like a sandwich or something this is the Genovese tomato so this is an heirloom classic Italian tomato as you can see it has a much different shape to it uh, this is a small one um, I think weight wise let's see what this weighs I'm gonna, I'm gonna say five ounces let's see how oh not too bad four point six three ounces so almost five ounces that's pretty close um kind of small i got one here a little larger let's see what this one weighs that one's 5.8 ounces almost six but let's cut this open this is really popular for making like pasta sauces and just other types of cooking i mean you can use it in a salad or sandwich I mean, you can use any tomato for anything that you want there's not you don't have to follow rules i don't follow rules when it comes to tomatoes at all and this one actually looks really good in the inside oh yeah it's a nice red color it's got that interesting shape to it um, seed pockets are kind of on the outside uh, holds up pretty well and the plant has done fairly well. I have two of them one's doing better than the other but They've been pretty doing pretty well in the garden. So this one, wow, this looks like a grocery store tomato. Well, in a sense, it is. Um, this is a tomato that popped up in our garden, probably from composting some seeds over winter. I saved the seeds from it because I grew it last year. It grew in the corner. I saved it. Did really well. And this plant's doing awesome in the garden. It I have no clue what it is, but like I say, it came from a grocery store. Um, Plants really tall. I actually have a bird nest in it. I made a video about that. And um, it just produces a ton of tomatoes. I want to say four or five ounces. I'm going to weigh this. They hold up really well. Really well. They, 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 they'll they keep on your counter for a week. Sometimes even I mean, two weeks. Um, they hold up just really well. They're very dense. Kind of hard. Um, you know they taste okay because you are picking them when they're ripe versus them being picked and green and then ripening them later so definitely better than if it was just in the grocery store um, but they're good for like you know using as a base for salsa you know or making a sauce and then adding some other more flavorful tomatoes to it um, but it's, it's very reliable and I'm going to continue to save the seeds from it just because of how reliable it is and it pretty much guarantees I can have pretty much tomatoes throughout most of the season and not worry about the heat and humidity uh, killing the plant, which is a big issue in the southeast. Believe it or not, tomatoes really are not the biggest fan of heat. Okay, so it's not as heavy as I thought. Four, four and a quarter. It just feels very dense. It's a very hard tomato. So let's cut this guy open. Very, yeah, much more. You know, not nearly as colorful on the inside as the other tomatoes. Like if we compare it to the Genovese, which was a nice heirloom. I mean, I mean, you can really see the contrast in color there. Very different. Not definitely not as flavorful. Um, but like I said, it's a good base and it's a good reliable uh, tomato to have. So this here, these are both Napa Chardonnay. They just kind of looked a little different, so I wanted to show two examples of them. So the Napa Chardonnay is a cherry tomato. It's awesome. Very sweet. Very juicy. Has a very thin skin. You won't be able to see this on camera, but if you're outside and it's very sunny, hold a ripe one up in the sun, you can basically see through it. It's basically translucent. That's how thin the skin is. The ready winter yellow, kind of like yellow gold. This one I've noticed this year, I've been getting some, I've been getting kind of like this brown on top when I'm ready to pick. Um, like almost like a like almost like a dark purple but regardless when they get nice and yellow they're ready to go a little soft and you bite in these these and these things just kind of just explode in your mouth 
but they're excellent in salads. And also I use them in salsa and sauces too. Like I use all my tomatoes in pasta sauce. I mix it up. And it, it still turns out red. The red definitely uh, dominates the colors. So let's cut the one that's got the kind of brown, dark purple on it. Yeah, we'll cut both of them open and see if they look any different on the inside. Ah, one's a little more green in the inside. The other one's a little more yellow. But very juicy, very sweet. You can just, I mean, yeah, a lot of juice in these. You know, uh, great tomato to grow. Anyway, that's the video I wanted to go over, just to see what these tomatoes actually look like in the inside. Um, and my recommendations of tomatoes would be Black Beauty, great tomato to grow. Um, I don't recommend the Green Zebra or the Paul Robinson if you're in the humid southeast. Um, it just doesn't seem to perform very well. Black Beauty performs very well. The Napa Chardonnay performs well. It's a great cherry tomato. The Genovese performs decent and it is a unique um, tomato to grow. And the Great White actually does very well. It likes to knock a lot of its tomatoes out at one time, like a determinate, but it's not. It's an indeterminate plant. It gets pretty big. But you'll get a good couple handfuls of tomatoes probably in the first couple weeks, and you'll get some more tomatoes coming in later. Um, but it's a light tasting tomato. But anyway, I hope this video helps someone out and just you know, gives them an idea if they want to grow a type of tomato variety or maybe realize, hey, there's no rules when it comes to cooking. You can you don't have to use red tomatoes and pasta sauce or salsa or anything in between. Use whatever you have on hand and when it all cooks down, it, it all turns out just fine. And if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment. I'll try to get back to you. And I'll finish off by saying uh, these tomatoes have been grown completely organically this year. So complete organic fertilizer. Um, absolutely no chemical fertilizer at all. They have not been sprayed with any type of chemical pesticide. I don't believe they've even been sprayed with an organic pesticide. And they've been sprayed with no chemical fungicide. Just a, a organic fungicide once or twice. So and it's on drip tape this year. No overhead sprinkler. And they've been doing really well. Anyway, till next time.